Not many people go missing and stay missing. There are hundreds of thousands of people reported missing. 99% of those return home are found safe. Of the remaining 1%, most of them turn up dead. And a tiny fraction are never found at all. They just, it seems, vanish into thin air. And it's not a lot. It's not as much as you might first think when you look at the reports or you look at the stats of the amount of people who are reported missing. In May 2021, the FBI conducted an internal audit of all the field offices and and they compiled a list of active missing persons under the age of 21. Cases that need some fresh leads, some date back decades. And this was done, I think, last year for the National Missing Children's Day. How many were on that list? 43. Probably not as much as you might think. By the time this video is up, I will put, a, put that list up on my community tab if you want to have a quick look. But it's not too many. 43 in the grand scheme of things isn't a lot. And you kind of get the drift. There's not a lot of people aged 21 and under who go missing and stay missing. The odds of two in one family is incredible. And a couple of weeks ago, I sat down, I was being a bit of a smartass, and I said, do you know what, I'll try to calculate the probability of that happening for Candice and Grandma Candice. I liked maths and applied maths in school. Maths and science were my thing, languages not so much. Always envied people who could do both. But anyway, I was a bit arrogant thinking that I could get a number for this. After about 30 minutes of trying to calculate the odds, I gave up because there's just too many variables and too many caveats inside her. Am I just to look at the United States? Just there? Does it count if somebody is in a similar situation for a couple of days? Where's the cutoff point for stay missing? I ran into a lot of issues. I started looking for examples all over the world. Street children in Russia, poor families near train stations in India, stuff like that. I couldn't find one, but even if I could, the problem there is there probably was little or no investigation done at all to find a missing person. The odds of this happening to Candace are huge. You have a much better chance of winning the lotto. The odds of this happening to Grandma Candace are astronomical, especially if I introduce the fact that Rose and Summer went missing in separate states. You happen to be in that state when they went missing. That's just one of a kind stuff. Grandma Candace is the unluckiest grandmother in the world. She has to be nominated. She's definitely getting a nomination for it. The odds are so high that when you really think about it and try to comprehend those odds, a giant elephant pops in the room. The chances that she has guilty knowledge of at least one of those cases, I not I don't know which one, I've no idea. But the chances that there's guilty knowledge in at least one of those cases is high. If I was a betting man, and I do, I do have five euro on the Grand National every year, I would put my money on that. I understand the probability and the odds of this happening once it can happen to anybody, but twice it's a bit much. I would happily take that bet. And it's just maths. I would say this to Grandma Candace's face. If I was friendly with her, if, if I knew her, that's something I'd say. You are either the unluckiest grandmother in the world, or you know something about one of these cases. So let's talk about Rose. I posted yesterday the 2019 um, police press conference for Rose Bly. The one in which they released the video, and I put the video in the press conference. I tried to increase the audio of the questions so people could hear it. And I was surprised at how many people actually haven't seen that before. That's the first thing I came across when I had a look in, in Rose's case. That was my introduction to the case. And I think it's a good video to start off with because I want to give Rose her own playlist. She's her own person. This is its own case. And I think that's a good video to start with. And the police have asked people to share this particular video on social media. So that's important. In the video that they play at the press conference, Grandma Candice is, is the center, is, is, the, is the star of the video. And if you haven't seen this before, there's straight away you notice a kind of disconnect. Because here she's pleading for information for her daughter to come home. But when Summer Wells case happens two years later, she doesn't want to talk about it anymore. You wonder what might have happened in, in that short time period. You also wonder why the husband isn't there. The video is trying to pull on you emotionally and... The best way to do that would have been with her kids. They were babies when Rose went missing. They don't have much memory at all of her, if any, I think. Which is very sad, and, and maybe that would be just totally unfair to them. And I completely understand. But that was my introduction to the Rose case. 
seeing this press conference, seeing this video where Grandma Candice is at the centre of it. I only came across this last year after a Candice interview. Like, I I've never heard of the Rose Bly case before Summerwells. I worried that I was coming into it with some confirmation bias from the Summerwells case. I may be a bit too hyper-focused on, on Grandma Candice, but she's the one that's in, in this video. And it's interesting that they either chose her or asked her to do it. There's also some very interesting editing happening in the middle of the video. Probably completely coincidental, but you'll start to see that very early on in this case, there's a few coincidences with Grandma Candace. So this was my introduction to the case. Then I had a quick Google for articles and things I could find. A Google, not research. Those two words seem to be interchangeable these days when they're completely different. I had a Google and I read 10 to 20 articles, the ones that I could find in Access without a VPN basically. And I would encourage everyone to do the same. If you haven't looked into this case before, just do that just to give yourself a quick introduction. And I was aware of my confirmation bias going into this, but you still are dragged a little bit in Grandma Candace's direction. First thing you do obviously is look at the husband. Like all cases like this, best place to start, most likely. And just a quick one on Rose's husband, because I know people are probably losing their minds in the comments here already telling me that he did it. Yes, he filed for divorce after it. Yes, the relationship was rocky, but I believe he was ruled out. Also, people were telling me yesterday that because he looked for custody of the kids, that this is a red flag. I don't see it as that at all. I see it as the opposite. If he knew for sure she wasn't coming back or she was dead, then there'd be no need to file for custody. He was worried that she was going to come back, take the kids and bunks, which happens all the time, especially with mothers who leave their kids and come back after a period of time. Ask Nicky Rule and his grandma about it. He seems to check out. Police have said he's not a suspect. Here is a screenshot of that little piece. Please pause it if you want to read it. But I want to just touch on two other things that I'm really looking for people's feedback on. Or any other information you have on it. These are two things that you'll find in all the early articles. The first one is the location of Rose's car. This was found near Grandma Candace's house. Not far at all. Rose grew up in the area so she knew the area. I'm not a hundred percent. I couldn't find it this morning but I believe I did read that it was actually Grandma Candace that found the car. We know from interviews she drives past that spot multiple times a day she said. But Rose did grow up in the area so she knows it well. Why her car was there on that night is a mystery. That's the first one. What do you think about the location of where Rose's car was found? Why was she there? And does it have any connection to Grandma Candace? Was she the one who found the car? Because I, I, I think I did read that but I, I'm not sure. And the second thing is just one line of what Grandma Candace said after it. Her last conversation with Rose. In most cases where someone is trying to say that oh she just wandered off. Like L Larry Millier trying to say that Maya wandered off. Everyone's like, no, 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 there's absolutely no way she would leave her kids. And that's for most mothers out there. People know, their friends know, their family know, there's no way she'd leave the kids. Grandma Candace did say this a few times. I've seen it was kind of prompted because there were so many other people saying it. She was just like, yeah, yeah, she wouldn't leave the kids. But she also said something which I find very, very odd. That last conversation. She put out there that she said that their last conversation, two days before she went missing, Rose was complaining about headaches. She said she fell from a horse. Grandma Candice said she told her to go and see a doctor. There's no evidence that she contacted the doctor. There's no evidence that there was any head injury at all. And she speculated, openly, that Rose suffered brain damage and wandered off on her own and that there was no one else involved. There's absolutely no evidence to support that theory. Why would she say that? Even if that was true, why would you say that knowing that it potentially might stop people from looking for your daughter? Her car was found at a place where truckers stop. Why aren't you jumping to the conclusion that she's with some guy in a truck? Why are you saying she wandered off because she fell on a horse? It's just very odd. Like to come out and say, oh I think she had brain damage. I think she wandered off on her own and no one else is involved. I don't know. What do people think about that? I'd love to know what people think about those two things in particular. Rose's car, the location of where it was found, why it was there. And this, the story about her falling from a horse. Just find it very odd. Never mind the fact that another one is, if your daughter went missing and you know the pain and the anguish that that is, why did you leave Candace? Why did you leave her on her own? 
leave her on her own on a hill on Ben Hinn Road and, and go back to Wisconsin. Like, why would you do that so soon after Summer went missing? There's a few dodgy things here, I think. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Is Grandma Candace the most unluckiest grandmother in the world? Or is there something else going on here? Good luck. God bless. Have a good day.